So let's, let's start with a deep breath, kind of set aside everything else, the, the, all the plans and everything else that you have or that are upcoming or, or whatever. Take a deep breath with me. Breathe in and breathe out. And now make it a prayer, breathe in. And as you breathe in, breathe in the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the presence of God, God's love and joy and peace and grace. And breathe out. And as you breathe out, let go of, let go of your fear, let go of your sin and your anxiety, your insecurities. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this time together. And we ask that you would open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our minds. Help us to be aware of your presence with us. Pour out your spirit on us. Shape us to be the people that you want us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And as we continue to reflect together on the Apostles' Creed, I invite you to, to say it along with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On the third day, he rose from the dead. Now, this is something we proclaim at least once every year at, at Easter, but I'm not sure we can ever really proclaim it enough because everything, everything hinges on this. He rose from the dead. I mean, it's the center of everything. Literally, it's at the center of, of the creed, the center of our faith. It brings depth and, and meaning to all that Jesus said and all that, that Jesus did. I mean, he was wise, he was compassionate, he, he did healings, he, he taught on forgiveness, all kinds of things. But it's the fact that he beat death, that he rose from the dead, that's why we follow him and worship him. That's why we e exist. Everything hinges on, on this. On the third day, he rose from the dead. On the third day, the, the impossible happened. It's hard to, to even begin to, to put into words. It's hard to wrap our minds around it. You, you, can't really, you can't really do it. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's, it stretches the imagination, which has become kind of a theme, hasn't it? And most of the most popular film versions of Jesus' life struggle with this God spell, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, Passion of the Christ. When it comes to rising from the dead, they, they show a sunrise maybe, some light coming in, the stone rolled away. It makes sense. Even the Gospels struggle with it. We have four different versions of, of, of the event. Four different ways of, four different perspectives on, on what happened. See, Matthew mentions an earthquake and an angel. Mark has a, a young man. Luke says there were two men in, in dazzling clothes. John talks about the, the linen cloths of, uh, around Jesus, and he mentions two angels and, and, and Jesus himself. They all, all have different versions of who and and, and how many people were, were even there to see anything. And none of them give any hint or, or clue as to what actually happened inside that, that tomb. What a, 
a body being raised from the dead looks like or, or feels like four, four versions of what happened. I, you, you could say that that's evidence that they made it all up. I, I, may, maybe so. But if everyone is giving the exact same version of events, it's, it's a pretty good sign that somebody has been tampering with the, the testimony because we all don't see all things all the same way. I mean, if it was a lie, well, the apostles died for this lie. They went to great lengths to, to, to share it, to spread it as far as they possibly could. I, I believe that they struggled with it because, because why wouldn't you struggle with it? Any version is going, going to sound crazy. The impossible happened. On the third day, he, he rose from the dead. Now, some people, in, in an effort to relate this impossible event, compare it to all kinds of things, compare it to the seasons changing, or the sun setting and then the sun rising, or, or how caterpillars turn into butterflies. You know, winter is, is cold and, and dark, but you know, spring is around the corner. Or the sun, the sun sets and the world goes dark and, and and dreary, but, but you know the sunrise is eventually coming. Or, or caterpillars form themselves into a cocoon and they sit there for days, but eventually they'll emerge as a butterfly. Now all of those things are, are great, they're, they're hopeful even, but they don't even hold a candle to this. They're, they're, they're nothing compared to, to what we're talking about. Jesus rose from the dead crucified, dead, and buried, descended to the dead, and, and now, now alive again? Not a ghost, not a spirit, not a hallucination, but eats and has scars and alive. Winter to, to spring is, is the natural course of things. Same with, with sunrises and, and butterflies. The natural course of things for a dead body is, is decomposition. A dead body, a, a person raised from the dead, not not CPR, not not defibrillated with with shock paddles, not resuscitated, dead, fully dead, and then raised, resurrected, something entirely new. The impossible happened. On the third day, he rose from the dead, and perhaps. Just as crazy is, is the apostles don't even bother trying to share or explain what this might mean for us, a future hope or, or life after death. It's almost like you and I aren't at the center of everything. Christ is. Instead, what they say is Christ is risen. Go spread the news. People need to hear about this. Share this. The, the, the impossible happened. Everything hinges on this. One of the things that I find most uncomfortable about resurrection is that it's, it's not really something I can do at all. I can't do anything about it. I can't control it. It's, it's out of my hands. I can't, even, I can't even really practice it. It's something only, only God can do. A, a, a miracle, a, a mystery the impossible. It's not that the apostles were saying as, as Jesus was hanging on the cross, oh, oh, just wait. It, this isn't that bad. He'll, he'll rise from the dead. Or as they buried and they weren't saying that, it's okay. This is, this is temporary. Or as his body decomposed in the tomb on Saturday, they, they weren't saying, just, just hold on, just, just trust. No. They felt the same way we feel when we face our own mortality, our, our failures, our, our, our losses. That's it. The end. Game over. Move on. But on the third day, he rose from the dead. Impossible. Hard to, to even... Put into words, much less wrap our minds around it. You can't, can't really do it. 
And yet this is, this is the center of our faith. This is the crux of who Jesus is. So share it. Spread the news. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I, I get it. It's, it's crazy. And yet everything hinges on this. With God, all things are possible. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Would you pray with me? Lord, help us as we learn to trust in you. To believe in you. To follow you. Bring us to new life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. May he protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he's shown you. And may he bring you home rejoicing once again to our door. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.